Hello, this is my Recreation Maths folder, um, which I'll put a link to. It's on Jumpshare. And um, I'm just going to talk about this um, in Equations with Whole Numbers, Lucky Numbers 2. Um, look at the problem. Uh, it's a continuation. Lucky numbers one, I did an exploration of this, but uh, it went in all kind of directions. But lucky number two is uh, like uh, a little bit uh, more concise and um, probably more readable. Um, it's based on a, a video uh, by Michael Penn, a recent video by Michael Penn, um, where he looks at this problem but with a value of k equals 2 and a equals 1. So p plus 1 equals 2x squared, p squared plus 1 equals 2y squared. And, if I, and he's looking for a prime solution, uh, so prime, the first prime, the only solution to that one is 7. Anyway, um, the method he used, it looked like, okay, well, you, you could uh, apply that to different values. It doesn't have to be k equals 2 and a equals 1. Um, so... Uh, I started by considering the problem of finding whole number solutions to p plus a is equal to kx squared, p squared plus a is equal to ky squared, when p is prime and p does not divide k. Okay, um, and if p does not divide k, well, when we subtract these two equations, we're going to get this thing here, p times p minus 1. The a's are going to cancel out, and we're going to get k y squared minus x squared, which we can factor as y minus x, y plus x. So we get this equation. And if p does not divide k, then to show that um, p uh, divides y plus x, we just need to show that it doesn't divide y minus x. And we can do that fairly easily because um, if y minus x is less than y plus x, which it is because x is positive. Um, this means that y minus x squared is less than y minus x times y plus x, fairly obviously. And that's this thing here. So we can plug that in to get the inequality uh, that is less than p squared over k. So for k greater than or equal to 1, this thing is going to be less than p. So p can't divide it which means that uh, if p does not divide k, we must have x plus y is equal to m times p. So then, then the rest of the, this is going to find solutions for given values of m and p. So the first thing we do is put x in terms of y. Um, so again, starting from this, this equation here, uh, if we substitute x plus y is equal to mp, because that's what we've found, then we get this, and divided by p we get uh, this, and adding both sides and multiplying by 1, so that we get just m times, uh, multiplying by m, we'll get m times p on this side. Uh, so we get mp is equal to k m squared because we multiply by m times y minus x plus n because we after we add one and multiply by m to bring it plus n and and we already know that m times p is equal to x plus y so this means that x plus y is equal to km squared times y minus x plus n and bringing the x and y to the left hand side we, we get this equation which shows that the greatest common divisor because if you've got some number times x plus some number times y is equal to m, then the greatest common divisor of x and y must be m, uh, uh, which can be rearranged to find x in terms of y. So we get this equation. So and then I go into a specific example, and then. So for this thing to be a whole number, we need the numerator to divide, uh, uh, the denominator to divide the numerator. 
which means that the, this uh, congruence equation holds. And uh, if you're not familiar with congruence equations, that just means that uh, the remainder is zero when we uh, divide this thing into this. And and it's not possible when m and, n, uh, m and k are both odd, basically. But um, when m and n are both even, I substitute e for 2e for k and 2f for n, and we get this equation, and we need this uh, mod modular equation to hold. It's the same equation as above. I've just moved the 2f across, so that's why it's not zero. And then, because uh, this is going to be an odd number, and this is going to be an odd number, and they differ by two, they can't share any um, odd factors, and they can't share any even factors, because we don't have any. So the greatest common divisor between them is going to be one. And then we can use the division algorithm to actually find. Um, so to solve this congruence equation in general, if we've got uh, a times y is equal to b mod n, then what we would have to do is multiply. Is if if a and n have a greatest common divisor of one, which we've shown they do because a is this thing and, and n is this thing, um, then there's a unique inverse for a, which we call a minus one, where a minus one times a is equal to one mod n. And uh, we can find that using a division algorithm. So we start by dividing a into n, which has a remainder of two because this is minus one, this is plus one. So they differ by two, uh, which if we just subtract a from both sides, we get two n minus a. And then we divide two into a is the next step of the division algorithm. And we can do that because 2 times 4 ef squared, if we look at a, a is 8 ef squared minus 1, so this is going to be a plus 1, so if we subtract 1 from both sides, but do it this way, so we do minus 2 plus 1 on this side, then we see this has got a factor of 2 here, plus 1, so we get a is equal to 2 times 4 ef squared minus 1, plus 1, and again we rearrange it like we did with this one, and then we substitute this 2, so instead of 2 here we're going to substitute the n minus a, and then we get this expression 1 is equal to 4 e f squared a minus n times 4 e f squared minus 1, and this is a multiple of n, this is 1, and this is something times a, which is obviously equal to 1 mod n. So that means that 4ef squared times a is equal to 1 mod n. So a, t the inverse of a in the modular arithmetic of n is 4ef squared. So the solution to the equation, to this equation, uh, is y is equal to minus 8 ef cubed uh, and the reason for that is because all we've done is we multiplied by the inverse on both sides uh, and if that's uh, if that's the remainder when it's divided by this thing then um, that means Another way of putting it that's not in modular arithmetic form is y is equal to this a is equal to n times some number plus this thing, which is a negative, so minus 8 e f cubed. And then we can go back to the expression we had for x and substitute this y value in. And then we get this kind of messy equation. Um, but we can bring out, because this, is, this has got n here and n here, 
they can bring that out and say, OK, there's just going to be V times the thing it's multiplied by, uh, plus the, the rest of this mess. But when you put this into uh, SIMP-B, it actually simplifies. So the, we get rid of the denominator, and it ends up being this. Uh, so that's the value. Uh, it, it simplifies to 2f minus 8ef cubed. So the whole thing is 2f minus 8ef cubed. And if we, uh, and so now we've got a value for x and we've got a value for y. And we know that x plus y is m times p. So we can then find a value for p. And, and then we can go back to the equation where we've got p p plus a is equal to kx squared. We know k, we know x, and we know p. So in theory we can find a. Uh, but if we do that, We get this very long expression here in terms of m and v and, and e, 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 which is k over 2, um, uh, which doesn't reduce or factorize. So uh, this is a summary of the results. So given equation p plus a is equal to kx squared, p squared plus a is equal to ky squared, where p is a prime number not dividing k, it is guaranteed that mp is equal to x plus y for some m. So we showed that basically p divides x plus y. And the system of equations over the whole numbers, we found the solution to this system of equations uh, is x is this expression in terms of k and m and v, this expression in terms of k, m and v for y, and this expression for p p is any whole number and though if we plug any value of v uh, uh, k and m into this where k and m are not both odd we will get a, a solution to the equation uh, where v is any whole number but it'll be a whole number but v uh, is such that because this because this uh, ef cubed has it is it is the inverse of a but it uh, it's not necessarily the smallest inverse so for instance if uh, if we were doing modular arithmetic and the inverse was two um, well this e f cubed isn't necessarily going to be two it might be seven or twelve or five times something plus two but it doesn't matter, that still gives the right answer. But what it means is that um, if we want positive values, uh, we have this inequality for it to hold. And so those are the equations that solve the uh, thing. And then I wrote some code just to implement this. So then to, so if we choose some values, so for instance, if we choose uh, k equals 3 m equals 4 we can't have 4 being an odd number if, if, if k is an odd number then m can't be an odd number and then v can be any number so let's choose 17 and then it, it'll give us the corresponding equation so we see that 361 plus some number is equal to 3 times 707 squared uh, but 361 squared plus the same number is equal to 3 times 737 squared. And 7, so x plus y, this is x, this is y, x plus y is 4, because m is 4, times the number 360. So this is x plus y is equal to m times p. This is p plus a is equal to k times x squared and p squared uh, plus a is equal to p times y squared. So, and it works for like really big numbers, so we can try. Uh, and, and we can put in 1 as well, so we can get uh, just, just square numbers uh, to uh, 1000.
So, so here k is 1, so it's just 1 times. So 3,997 uh, plus some number is equal to this squared, and the squared plus the same number is equal to this squared, and it's 2 times. And, well, let's just finish by making a really big one. So we can see that this number plus this is 2999999 something 8 uh, squared. But if you square it and add the same number, you get 4999996 squared. And that's a good place to stop. So there'll be a link in the uh, description to the uh, document and uh, the code and also to the recreation maths folder.